All right, and today we're going to look at enterprise resource planning systems. Um, so and if you can think about, so we talked a little bit about all the different functional systems out there, and I said, well, that's great that we have all these functional systems, but they're not integrated. And so they have all this data that's being duplicated, they have processes that are uh, disparate all over the place in your organization, and it can lead to a big um, cluster of problems unless you can start tying them together somehow. And so the idea behind enterprise resource planning was let's pull everything together in an organization and put it into one system. So that's, and so these are the questions um, we're going to cover. What is the purpose of an ERP? Uh, what are the elements of an ERP? What are the ERP systems, or how are ERP systems implemented? What types of organizations use ERP, and how do major ERP vendors compare? So if you remember, we talked um, uh, back a little bit about information systems were thrown together as needed, and usually each system achieved its single uh, business process, a single task. Um, they were not integrated and could not share resources. Well, people figured out this is a problem, and they, they recognized it, and they started saying, okay, well, we've got all these networks of computers now that are connected together, and all these people are now are, are, are interacting with each other. We need our software also to be integrated and working together. And it started with some middleware. So this is, um, you can think of a software that sits in between lots of other functional systems. This is the enterprise application integration we also talked about. It's another name for it is middleware. Although middleware can be very basic or it can be very complex. Um, at ECU, we use something called One Stop. That's kind of like a middleware. It's kind of like a, a place where you can go where everything's connected together, right? So middleware had to be written so that data could be used between systems. Um, so what is the purpose of an ERP system? Its primary purpose is the integration of purchasing, human resources, production, sales, and accounting data into a single system. If you can imagine, that is pretty much the entirety of your uh, organization. All right? But it does allow real-time global updates whenever a transaction happens and is often critical to making business decisions um, made by using the latest data. Absolutely critical. And so the, the value that's gained from this is that you get a instantaneous picture of everything that's going on in the organization. And so you cut out a lot of the problems that occur from all these disparate systems and a multiplicity of competing software that may or may not uh, have the, all the information you need. Right? It's all in one place now. And so it's really easy to find what you need to find. It, and it also allows your business to even expand quicker because you don't have to create new applications. It's already built in to the enterprise resource planning system. All right, so very, very, very few organizations develop their own ERP software. <clears throat> the big reason why is that this is a massive piece of software. Massive. And, and in order to develop it yourself, you need many, many years millions of dollars, hundreds of employees, consultants, and vendor. And that is if you use an existing ERP system. If you had to develop it yourself, you're talking 10 times easy the amount of money. All right? So SAP um, is the name of a company that develops the largest uh, enterprise resource planning software out there. Okay, it contains over fifteen thousand tables, separate tables. So you know, we we did our little exercise in class. It consisted of maybe five, six tables. We're talking fifteen thousand tables. That's how big it is, right? All right. So it is extremely important to the organization, and you know, ninety-nine percent of the time, you're going to buy an existing piece of software to make this happen. Um, so what are the elements that are typically in these? Well, you have, number one, your business, uh, your application programs that do specific business applications. Um, you have business process procedures, which defines the how the business works. We have the databases 
for storing this information. And then you all, lastly, you need some sort of training and consulting. Um, so you need a, the ability to teach people uh, how to use this stuff and use it correctly. Uh, and because it, it, there is such a vast amount of integration now, um, so this, you know, you're looking at things like supply chain, manufacturing, customer relationship, human resources, and accounting. And so you have to integrate all this stuff. But it also includes, you know, making sure you all have the correct business processes across each of these. You want to make sure that you have. Um, people are trained to use all these things that you've captured all the data that you need to capture in the right places so you can find it and pull it out and use it to make better decisions. Alright, so how are ERP systems implemented? All right. um, well, you start with basically understanding what currently is being done. Um, so you have to go through a major, major uh, the review of every current business process as it currently sits. This is a massive undertaking just to identify this, right? Um, secondly, you need to determine what the ERP enables you to do. Okay. Um, now, what's interesting is that if you talk to different um, suppliers of ERP systems, they're each going to have a different set of blueprints for the processes. So if you're going to do this comparison very well, you need to understand not only your own processes, but what is the difference between multiple ERP vendors. So yeah, this is, it's already seen quite big, right? But here's the problem, right? So you can take that software, so maybe you decide to work with SAP, who's the largest um, ERP vendor, right? And we'll talk more about who the other ERP vendors are, but they're the largest. What happens if you decide to, uh, to, to change the software to fit your business? So you say, our, our business processes are great the way they are, we're going to change the software to make it. Well, here's the problem. What happens when SAP comes out with a new edition of their software? If you've made a lot of changes to the existing piece of software, it's very, very difficult to upgrade to this new version. And that is oftentimes why people say, all right, we don't want to change the software because the upgrade cycle as it continues going to the future is going to be extremely difficult. We don't like difficult. We want easy, right? Um, it may actually be easier to change how the business runs. In other words, your business processes. Um, so those are really your two big choices. Change the software or change the organization processes. Um, now ideally, and I do say ideally because this isn't always true, but ideally the ERP institutes industry best practices. Which means there's good reason why your organization might want to modify uh, the organizational process to meet the industry best practices. So they're doing, so your organization, if, so this is the organization you're working at and you're implementing ERP, you want it to work the best that it can do, you've got to be able to, um, you know, you, you, you're going to say, all right, if, we, if, if our current process isn't the best, why don't we change it, right? It seems to make sense. So oftentimes, whenever they, people go about implementing an ERP system, there's also a business process reengineering, which we talked about previously, right? Business process reengineering. So understanding your business process and reengineering that, so you're basically changing it so that it matches how the ERP system works. Now this is done before you even implement the software. So that is, so you oftentimes will spend millions of dollars just on that, changing how the business works, because that requires a whole lot of retraining and a whole. You might need some temporary pieces of software to get you through this. Uh, so I mean, it, 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 I'm talking. This is this is huge, right? Um, but then once you've removed all these inconsistencies, then you can actually go about implementing the ERP application. But this requires you to have a detailed plan of how you're going to do it. You got to train your users. You have to simulate and test and retest and make sure you get all the bugs out of the system because this is a core part of your business. You don't want to screw it up. 
is extremely important. You don't screw this up. So you have to test, 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 and test. Um, you have to convert all of your old data from maybe 50 different applications into one. And so some people might be using different ways of formatting, maybe different types of date formats, or maybe they have different ways of uh, you know, describing categories or, you know, and that could just be something as simple as do they use a, a period or do they use a comma or do they use an S or without an S or there's so many little bitty teeny bitty differences in how and data across different systems different systems that you have to when you consolidate them it takes a lot of work. You also have to convert to new procedures. And then finally, after all of that, that's when you finally do your rollover to your new ERP system and people start using it. Now, if that doesn't seem like a massive project, I don't know what is. Um, because what you're doing is touching every part of your business, you're changing every part of your business, you're impacting every single employee in the business. Um, and inevitably, some current practice models are incomplete, vague, or inaccurate. So the team, in order to make this happen, has to, you know, I mean, they, they must be able to adapt and cope and define new procedures whenever there's any confusion in this. And, and it's, it's, it's monstrously huge and hard to do. All right. So what's the magnitude of an ERP implement, implementation? Um, so SAP Blueprint contains over a thousand process models. That's a thousand separate business processes. Now, think about this, you know, in each class that you take in your degree program, you're probably learning about one or two, maybe three different business processes. And how many classes do you take in your major? You know, maybe six or seven. Um, so you're barely even scratching the surface on the entirety of all the different business processes that may exist. So then think about all the different classes in the College of Business. Well, now they're talking about you know maybe a hundred different classes, each with two or three different process models. So you're, you got a few hundred. Well, SAP Blueprint has a thousand, over a thousand different process models. And so what you have to do. And realize that even in your, in your college education, you're not touching everything that a business does. You get all the basics, but you're not looking at some of the more complex things. Um, that, however, is what needs to be in an ERP system. It needs to cover all these complex things and all these more esoteric processes that aren't maybe not only happen all the time. Maybe they only happen, you know, th four times a year, like you know, declaring your taxes or something. Um, but they have to go through that process of doing the current model as is and comparing that to the ERP blueprint process. Um, it is a massive, massive project. And doing installing an ERP system easily will take a business a million dollars, especially for mid to large businesses. Now, if you're a small business, you could probably find a way to do this much cheaper, maybe on the order of 20,000 to 100,000. Um, since I don't have a whole lot of experience at that level, um, uh, or actually I have very little ERP experience personally, uh, I haven't even heard much about the cost at that level, but I'm assuming even if you have a small business, so let's say you're making 100 million a year, and that's usually considered small, and, and actually 1 million would be really small, right? Um, but 100 million a year, you know, I mean, that's still a big chunk of money to take a hundred thousand dollars to um, implement an ERP system, right? So, what types of organizations use ERP? Well, actually, they use them all over the place. From manufacturing is probably where they first originated and were most popular, but also in things like distribution centers. Um, you find them in mining and materials extraction and petroleum on any of that genre. They also have their own specialized ERPs. Now they have their own special business processes, but they still use an ERP. In medical care, this is really growing, especially in the past, I would say, five years. Um, there's been a number of um, government mandates that basically says to the medical community that you are going to do these things, um, including things like electronic health records. Um, and the entire integration of the entire hospitals 
um, are based upon the are founded upon these, but they found that there's a lot of resources that can be saved by using an ERP system in a hospital. Uh, government and public service are using a lot of ERP. So that obviously they, and these tend to be more service oriented um, institutions, but they too need uh, an enterprise level look at what's going on. You have your, your utilities companies and your retail companies, even in education. Now at ECU we use something called Banner, which does, I don't know if you would call it an ERP system, um, but essentially does a lot of the major functions of running the business of ECU, which includes registering students and assigning classrooms and stuff like that. Now there's still a lot of other applications that are not integrated with Banner, um, but the point being though that is that there are these ERP systems that are designed specifically for these types of organizations. All right, let's take a look at the major vendors. Um, well, I'll also actually start at the bottom with the top vendor, which is SAP. Um, it's actually a German company, uh, and they uh, have over 40% of the market share. Uh, they are, when you say ERP, most people think of SAP first. Their primary clients, um, well, let's, let's first, before we talk about their primary clients, um, a couple quick, quick remarks. They are the kind of the success, success story when it comes to ERP. Largest vendor, most comprehensive solution, and work with the largest customers. Uh, however, their technology does tend to be a little bit older, uh, expensive, and seriously challenged by less expensive alternatives. But it has a huge customer base. Um, so where it goes into the future, we're not quite sure, but they obviously have had a big success. Um, but in order to maintain that success, they have to continue to install new places. They've already hit a lot of the big companies, so what's left? I don't know. All right, number two on the list is Oracle. Now Oracle also was originally became big because of they sold a database that became extremely popular, um, the Oracle database. As they continued to grow, they decided to add more business support, um, which led to them buying companies like PeopleSoft and Cybel, um, and they combined all these products together into an ERP system. So PeopleSoft actually developed a customer relationship management, um, so it's been integrated with their ERP system. A very, very uh, um, competitive company, uh, very large customer base, very flexible, uh, and that it uses something called an S, um, the service-oriented architecture. Um, but it's very expensive. Right. Now, there's also a company out there called Infor. Um, it's privately held, so it's not as well known, uh, but has acquired an ERP product named Bon, among others. Um, uh, but it tends to focus more on smaller and mid-sized companies with their solutions. Now Microsoft is actually on here. Now the, their market share um, would probably be closer to like 4% of the market. And so by this point we're actually getting pretty small. I think Oracle is around 20% in for about 3 or 4%. Microsoft's around 3 or 4%. And Microsoft's product um, it actually has several products, and this is actually a slightly old. They have more than four products now. Um, so, because um, I just went out to their website this morning to learn a little bit more about Microsoft Dynamics, and yeah, it's it's more than four. I, I want to say it was around seven uh, different products now, and they integrate together a lot better than they used to. So it says in here the product's not well integrated with Office. Well, that's no longer true. They've worked really hard about making them. So they actually ended up, I think, buying external products and then slowly integrated it with Microsoft's platform. Um, so yes, I, I believe Microsoft, their product direction is becoming much more clear. They're still focusing on the small and mid-side market, um, but helping people grow with them using a lot of the Microsoft Office products. So they want to try to make it easy. If you already know how to use Office, you can use this. And that's kind of what they're, you know, make it easy to learn how to use product. And then the smallest one at this point is called Epicor. Strong, but it's very industry specific solutions, especially retail. Um, but it's a very highly configurable, low cost, um, and so it is a, a popular solution. 
So where do these fit in? Well, I think I mentioned a few of these. So like Microsoft Dynamics generally focuses on the lower end, um, and it really tries to transition people from using just like office documents like Excel and Word for their uh, managing their system into much larger um, companies as they continue to grow. Epicor and Inform tend to hit more of the mid-sized companies with their solutions, and then Oracle and SAP at the high end, big systems. So, what else can we say about ERP? Well, not a whole lot, all right? So, um, basically, we know what the purpose of an ERP system is, which was to integrate together all of these disparate functional systems into one comprehensive piece of software that runs the entire business. Now, this doesn't mean you still don't have lots of separate information systems to do other different components. Um, and sometimes, even though the ERP system might have a module that does something, a business may choose not to implement it because it's not how they want to run their business. Um, so it's not to say just because you have an ERP system that you get rid of everything else. You don't. Um, oftentimes you're layered on top of other pieces of software. But we saw what some of the major elements of an ERP system uh, includes, and it's not just you know, it's, it's, it's not just the applications, but it also includes the database, the training and consulting and all the different pieces that work together. Um, and how does it work together? Well, it works across many different aspects of the business, from supply chain to manufacturing to human resources to accounting. How are they implemented? Well, uh, similar to the, how the functional information systems, but generally speaking, a lot of these times, a lot of these systems, you want businesses choose, let me rephrase that, businesses often choose to change how they run their business in order to use this software. Um, simply because the software ideally uses best practices and you want to be, make sure that you can upgrade in the future to new versions of the products. In order to do that, you need to have a um, it, it, you need to have a business that better matches the software in order for that upgrade to work. Now if you're using a smaller piece of um, software, a smaller application, it's easier to change to a different type of application if your business changes. Um, with ERP it's not as easy because this is a core part of your business. It's very, very expensive to change so you don't want to change. And so there's generally a different approach. All right, what types of organizations use ERP? Well, we saw that it's used uh, in many, many different industries. Uh, they all find value in this. And I would say today, there's we've gotten past the major push to get ERP into a lot of businesses. Now, this is a great value added for you if you're looking for some skill set to set you apart from your um, uh, you know, fellow graduates. Learn how to use an ERP system like SAP or Oracle, learn learn how that works and learn that some of those skill sets um, so that way when you go out into industry you can have something that's very useful to employers. Um, where should you start? Well SAP is obviously a good one especially if you want to work at a large company or even Oracle. Um, if you're more interested in working in a mid-size or small company you can definitely learn Microsoft Dynamics, you can learn how to use um, the uh, Infor or um, Epicor. Um, those are still good products, they're still popular. Um, they tend to be again at the smaller end and at the larger but still something of value for you to consider. Well that's all we're going to talk about for ERP today. Next time we'll talk a little bit about supply chain management and globalization and all those good things. Uh, until then, take care.